Hello Matrix and welcome to the 8th of 10 videos for Grade 12 Functions brought to you by the Answer Series. This 8th video discusses exponential and logarithmic graphs. If I look at the inverse of y equals a to the x, remember what I do in an inverse in place of y goes x and in place of x goes y. I then change from exponential form into logarithmic form, which means that if f of x equals a to the x, then the inverse f to the minus 1 of x is equal to log to the base a of x. And we're going to use that in this video. If I take my exponential graph, remember what we had is the following. If a is greater than 1, my graph slopes like that. And if a lies between 0 and 1, my graph slopes like that. My asymptote is y equals 0. If I look at my logarithmic graph, if a is greater than 1, that's what my graph looks like because it's a reflection of this graph in the line y equals x. If a is between 0 and 1, my graph looks like that. Again, it is a reflection of this graph in the line y equals x. In my exponential graph, the asymptote was y equals naught. So in the inverse, my logarithmic graph, the asymptote is x equals naught. Example number one. What I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and I want you to try this example. See what you can do and then we'll do it together. Withdrawing the graph. Notice your asymptote is y equals 0. Your y-intercept, I make x equal to 0, so your y-intercept is 1. And then I asked you to show at least one other point, so I chose to make x equal to 1. And if x is equal to 1, the point that lies on the graph is 1, 2. To determine the equation of the inverse, in place of y goes x, and in place of x goes y. I change from exponential into logarithmic form, and there is the inverse. To draw the inverse on the same set of axes, notice what happens. The asymptote of y equals naught becomes x equals naught. The y-intercept of 1 becomes the x-intercept of 1. The point 1, 2 becomes the point 2, 1 because f and f to the minus 1 are reflections in the line y equals x. So there's my graph of f to the minus 1 of x. In 1.4 I ask you for the domain of the inverse. Now my inverse is here. It is exclusively above the asymptote x equals naught, so my domain is x greater than 0. In 1.5, I ask you for the equation of the asymptote of f to the minus 1 of x minus 3. Now what does that x minus 3 do to the graph? It moves it 3 units to the right. So what does it do to my asymptote? Well, it was x equals 0, move it 3 units to the right, and my asymptote becomes x equals 3. The last question, I'll ask you for the equation of the graph obtained if the inverse is translated one unit up. So it becomes y equals log to the base 2 of x, which was my inverse. One unit up means it becomes plus 1. Example number two. 
So what I want you to do here again is I want you to pause the video and I want you to try this one and then we'll do it together. To write down the coordinates of P, notice that P is the y-intercept of the graph. How do you find the y-intercept of any graph? You make x equal to 0. And a to the power 0 is 1, which means that P's coordinate is 0, 1. To determine the value of a, I take the point Q that lies on the graph. In place of x, we'll go 2. And in place of y, will go 4 over 9. So I get that a squared equals 4 over 9. I told you that a is greater than 0, which means a has to be 2 thirds. Now that makes perfect sense. If I look at my graph, the shape of my graph is like that, which means a is supposed to lie between 0 and 1. I've got a value of 2 thirds, so it makes sense. So always when you do graphs, look at the graph to see whether your answer makes sense or not. Two point three asks you for g to the minus one of x. Remember, in place of y goes x, and in place of x goes y. And I change to logarithmic form and I get g to the minus one of x. When I draw the graph of the inverse of the sa on the same set of axes, the asymptote of y equals naught becomes an asymptote of x equals naught. The y-intercept of 1 becomes the x-intercept of 1. And my inverse looks like that. Notice the line y equals x, and you can see very clearly that g and g to the minus 1 are reflections of each other in that line y equals x. 2.5, I ask you for the coordinates of r, where r is the point q reflected in the line y equals x. Now remember, when you reflect a point in y equals x, your x and y values swap. So if q is 2, 4 over 9, then r is going to be 4 over 9, 2. Two point six asks you for the equation of the graph obtained if g to the minus one of x is reflected in the y axis. So there's my y axis. If I reflect a graph in the y axis, what happens to it? Well all your x values become minus x values. So my equation stays exactly the same except in place of x goes minus x. Now you might be thinking you can't take the log of a negative number, so how can I have log to the base two-thirds of minus x? Well, if I look at g to the minus 1 of x, that's where g to the minus 1 of x is. All my x values are positive. So when I reflect it in the y-axis, all of my x values are now negative, which means minus x is minus negative values. In other words, minus x is in fact positive. So it's fine to have log to the base two-thirds of minus x because x, the x values themselves are negative. The last question, where is log to the base two-thirds of x greater than or equal to 2? Well, it's equal to 2 at that point. Where is it greater than or equal to 2? Over there. In other words, when x is less than or equal to 4 over 9. But there's my asymptote. My graph never goes beyond my asymptote, which means I must include that x must be greater than 0 as well. You should now be able to draw logarithmic graphs. Thank you for watching this video. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series, your key to exam success.